What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Let's fix this fucking camera angle, make that shit square. All right, so we're going to talk about something that I think um, should be talked about. And now uh, I'm not trying to say that being vegan is wrong. I'm not trying to say that being vegetarian is wrong. I'm not trying to say that being a carnivore is wrong, an omnivore, uh, herbivore, whatever, whatever the fuck you want to state this. Whatever you're doing, if it works for you, by all means, keep doing it. Like, if your health is in good health and your markers are good and you feel great, by all means, keep doing what you're doing. However, with the release of Game Changers, there's been a lot of people fucking freaking out, not knowing which direction to go in. They don't even understand, you know, like what, you know, what they just saw with Game Changers. And I broke it down. And I think it did a pretty good job of breaking down and exposing some of the holes that were in that, that documentary. Um, but all you hear in things like Game Changers and, and documentaries and stuff like that or the, uh, the agenda that's put out like that is the good things, right? Because studies say this, studies say that, studies this. And, you know, if you look for something that's in a study, you're going to find something that completely wipes that off the map and says it's wrong. Even vegan-wise. But they don't say, well, here's the thing. Some studies, they, they just give you, like, you know, like anybody else is cherry-picking shit. They give you the good and don't give you the bad. So without the good and bad, you can't make a decision for yourself. It's not an educated decision. It's a forced decision from propaganda that has created a brainwash in you that makes you go, I have to do this. This is the only way, right? And we have Kai Green who's kind of spearheading this shit now, and I'm like, here's the deal. Kai Green talks about, like, oh, when I started out, I lived on grapefruits and rice. When you started out, you were fucking homeless. Grapefruits and rice and shit were the fucking cheapest foods to get, so don't make it seem like you started out as a vegan and went to meat. That's fucking bullshit. Kai Green built his physique eating fucking giant amounts of fucking animal protein, not fucking rice. That's not how that works. Matter of fact, when he was homeless and shit, eating rice and stuff, he was, like, the smallest he had been. He started eating that fucking meat and eating large amounts of meat and he got fucking big. Now, he decides he's going to go fucking vegan or plant-based. Within a week, he's got out a plant-based fucking meal plan diet book on how to be the fucking vegan. What are the odds? Some people are just capitalists, which is fine. But the bottom line is to, you know, concoct these stories and shit. It, it's, it's basically taking advantage of a fad. It's taking advantage of people that don't know any better. My thing is, I'm going to give you guys all the information. So even the bad, the good and the bad, you guys already know the good, you've heard it from fucking Game Changers, Kai Green, all these motherfuckers, right? What about the bad? People don't talk about the bad, right? Well, here we go. So we're going to give you um, eight dangers of being vegan. Now, nobody talks about this shit, but I'm going to talk about it. Number one, legume protein sources may increase, or sorry, legume, legume source protein sources increase risk of leaky gut. Since vegan diet excludes all forms of animal protein, including meat, fish, eggs, and dairy, people following a vegan diet often turn to legumes as plant-based protein source. Legumes have high levels of anti-nutrients, including lecithins, phytates, and both which can increase intestinal permeability, also called leaky gut. On the contrary, protein sources from animals do not contain these anti-nutrients and are among the highest sources of uh, foods in terms of nutrition for humans. So number one, vegan can cause leaky gut syndrome, which you're never going to hear anybody talk about. But... 85% of people that go vegan go back to eating meat again at some point due to health concerns. All right? Pay the 85%, right? That's that's a crazy amount. Um, two, soy protein causes hormone disruptions, including um, estrogen and thyroid hormone. Now, they'll tell you, no, it's not true. That's bullshit. It's true, but it, it, it's a twist. They're twisting that, right? The, the vegans are twisting that. Listen, um, a result of excluding all forms of animal protein, vegans turn to soy protein as a source. While unprocessed forms of soy may be okay for some people, unprocessed forms of unprocessed forms of soy may be okay for some people, right? Some people. Those are the studies that you get. It doesn't hurt anybody. Some people unprocessed, just like that coconut oil shit. Custom blend coconut oil gets studied. All of a sudden, the shit on the market is some kind of bullshit, and everybody thinks it's the same thing. No, that processed soy shit that you're taking in is not. Look up the processed soy stuff that causes hormonal disruptions. The unprocessed stuff doesn't, but most people don't eat that. Um, uh, da, 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 uh, processed forms of soy are commonly found in a vegan diet, including tofu, soy milk, and soy-based processed foods sold as meat substitutes, right? Those fake burgers, fake, that's processed shit. Processed soy foods are no better than human health, for human health, than any highly processed foods, but with the added risk of hormone interference due to phytoestrogens found in all forms of soy. But when they're processed, that's when it causes the issue. It's like anything else. You could drink raw milk. Once it's processed, people have digestion problems and shit. Once it's processed, and the lactose changes the way that it fucking works. You can drink raw milk when you're lactose intolerant to be fine. They pasteurize it. You can't fucking drink it. Three, risk of anemia due to lack of heme iron. 
Now people say, well, you can get plenty of iron. Pay attention. You get plenty of iron through a vegan diet. Pay attention. Iron deficient anemia is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world, and both vegans and vegetarians are at higher risk of this condition. While plant foods contain a form of iron, it's called non-heme iron, and it's much less absorbable than the body, by the body. Iron deficient anemia can lead to serious symptoms including fatigue. Women of childbearing age should be aware of how vegan vegetarian diet can quickly lead to anemia. While iron supplements can be taken to help reverse to prevent anemia, most women dislike taking iron supplements because of the negative side effects. Simple solution is to consume heme-based iron from red meat sources. Always choose organic and grass-fed sources, blah, blah, blah. Four, increase risk of depression with low omega-3 fatty acid intake. People don't think about this shit. And by the way, if you're going to take omega-3 fatty acids, most of the time, or pretty much all the time, it comes from animal sources, so you can't supplement it either. Like that, We'll get into that whole thing in a second. Food source of omega-3 fatty acids from fish or fish oils or increased consumption um, of omega-6 fatty acids from foods like nuts. Vegans might be at higher risk from depression. One study showed this to be the case. Um, Algae-based sources of omega-3 fatty acids are an option, but they are expensive and hard to find. And since many vegan diets may include higher than average intake of nuts, the balance of fatty acids in the body can still be off balance. So they have stuff to back this up, but it, it, it's like to be able to make things nutritionally efficient, you have to go way out of your way in a vegan diet. You don't just go to the store and buy a fucking multivitamin. It's not like that. Risk of vitamin B12 deficiencies. Uh, B12 is only available in animal foods. Vegans are at much higher risk of developing a deficiency in this vital nutrient. In fact, most nutrition professionals agree that those vegan, those on a vegan or vegetarian diet must supplement with high quality vitamin B12 supplement to avoid irreversible health conditions that can result from deficiency. It should also be noted that many people have genetic variation known as MTHFR that can impact low B vitamins are absorbed. In this case, even B vitamin supplementation may not be enough to prevent a deficiency. Six, inhibition of zinc absorption on vegan and vegetarian diets. Similarly to B12, vegan and vegetarian diets can result in low zinc status. The problem is this case is higher consumption of plant foods containing phytic acid that inhibits the ability to body to absorb zinc. Because this um, issue with zinc absorption, it is often recommended by nutritional professionals that vegans and vegetarians should increase the zinc up to 50% of the recommended daily allowance to ensure adequate levels. I guarantee you most of you out there that are doing a vegan diet may have never heard of that. I guarantee you most of the people out there that watch Game Changers have no idea about this shit, right? Seven, risk of consuming too many carbohydrates. Vegan diets are generally lower in protein and cause blood sugar swings from certain individuals. Certain individuals. So some people are okay, and those are the ones talking, oh, I'm so fucking great, I feel great. And everybody goes, well, they feel great, I'm going to... It doesn't work out that way. Pay attention and listen to your body. Um, there's also risk of over-consuming carbohydrates on a vegan diet, especially since legumes are often consumed as a protein source. Over-consuming carbohydrates can lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, blood sugar dysregulation, and other troublesome... I just pushed the wrong button over here. Other troublesome, um, where are we over here? I lost my troublesome symptoms. Eating a diet that includes moderate to high levels of protein has been shown to have positive effects on satiety and weight management. In this one, I, I, we should definitely discuss risk of disordered eating. Orthorexia is a type of eating disorder that is defined by an overfixation on healthy eating patterns. It can result in over restriction, obsession, and serious eating disorders. At, studies have found that vegans and vegetarians tend to display more orthorexic eating patterns. And most eating disorder specialists do not recommend restrictive diets such as veganism or vegetarianism for people trying to recover from an eating disorder such as orthorexia. Now, here's the thing. Vegan diets are a great place for people with eating disorders to hide out. It's very easy for them to go, well, I'm vegan. And people go, oh, okay, that's why you're being so picky with your food. You go to restaurants, can't eat much besides maybe some salad or something like that. It's very easy for someone with an eating disorder to go, this is for me because I can restrict all this other shit and I can just hide out in plain sight. No one will know I have an eating disorder. Now, I'm not saying all vegans look sickly, but there's many vegans that I've known are sickly looking as fuck, thin, faces sucked out. They look like skeletons. And I'm like, why the fuck? Like, I mean, technically, if you're hitting your caloric needs and your macronutrients, you shouldn't look like that because it's an eating disorder. Now, it also, just like, um, you know, a contest diet, vegetarianism, veganism can also, if somebody's in danger of having these eating disorders and they don't really know it, it can also create a good compounded fucking um, situation that will create the eating disorder. I shouldn't say create, but allow that eating disorder to take place. Allow it to come to fruition, allow it to manifest itself because you already have a disorder eating or displaced eating um, way of thinking with food in general. So there's some things that, you, you know, you don't hear this shit, right? All you hear is about, oh, fucking eat your plants and you're going to be fucking awesome, right? Now, there's also, where the fuck was this one over here? Um, this one is reasons to stop 
following a vegan diet. Meaning, if you're vegan, this is what you should do. If you, this is what you should do if you're eating a vegan diet and you feel these symptoms, right? Now, number one is you're constantly bloated. Um, a lot of people uh, move to the kale smoothies and stuff. When you market a vegan diet, you'll start taking in a lot more food maps, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols like beans, legumes. Food maps, FOD, sorry, FOD maps are made up of carbohydrates, sugars, and fiber that draw water into your intestine. If you are sensitive to them, they can make you bloat, feeling like you're smuggling a water balloon under your shirt. Sometimes bloating happens when you switch up your food, but if it persists for weeks, that may be a sign that veganism isn't the right diet for you. Um, you've got a history family of osteoporosis, a family history, not a history family, family history, excuse me. Um, dairy is the best source of calcium, so cutting it out means you have to supplement in other ways. Most vegans, this is well, all well and good. Uh, but if you've got a family history of bone disorders like osteoporosis, you might want to rethink your choice. It may be harder for you to truly meet your nutritional calcium um, combined with your family history, even if you turn to supplements. It's something that you should consider if you're, you know, if you're, you're getting tested and your levels are low. Feeling sluggish all the time. Here's an interesting one. Iron provides oxygen to the blood. It's one of the body's best energy sources. We rely on heme iron. We talked about this in the other one. Um, it comes from animal. Vegan diets consist of non-heme irons, which aren't absorbed by the, bo the, bo the blood as well. Excuse me. Um, that can cause headaches, leave you feeling slower or weak. There's another reason veganism may result in a bout of droopiness. Um, it's a uh, perniocuous anemia, never heard of that, which can happen when you're low on B12. B12 only occurs naturally in animal products and is very important um, for a number of reactions in the body. Um, you're becoming obsessed with food is another reason to stop being a vegan. This is a uh, Jordan Younger story. I don't know who that is. Um, uh, she basically put up this big thing about what happened with her veganism. It's getting a big push right now. Um, if there's anything unhealthy motivation behind, if there's any unhealthy motivation behind a vegan diet, that can be a red flag. It's easy to over restrict. If you feel like you may be over restricting under the guise of veganism, um, they suggest that you uh, over you do you overthink everything you put in your mouth. Is your vegan diet becoming an all-consuming part of your life? Do you feel like you have a serious fears about messing up your diet? If so, you can should consult an expert at that point before stopping the diet. Now, here's the thing: all vegans are fanatical about their diet, right? just like all bodybuilders are, right? However, bodybuilders are usually fanatical about their diet for a sport, for a certain period of time to accomplish their goal. Veganism is for life. There's no vegan competitions. You know what I mean? It's not like you turn vegan as you can outdo the other ones. So it's a long-term lifestyle thing, which is why many people go back to eating meat because of these issues, right? There's, um, I mean, there's a whole, there's all kinds of fucking shit in here, but you guys get the, the, the gist of what this is all about, right? Here's the deal, guys. For as many reasons as there could be to go vegan, there are just as many reasons to not go vegan. For as many good things that happen when you're vegan, there's just as many bad things that happen when you're vegan. The fact that 85% of people drop off after, you know, however period of time. You know, I had a friend recently, this is fucked up. She was vegan for four years, right? And she tried to convert me, and I'm not going to lie. She would tell me shit like, how can you eat those animals? We're both very spiritual, and um, we both are kind of on that level. Like we have these spiritual conversations like that. I think most people are like, what the fuck? Which is a different level of spirituality, right? And her big thing was vegan, 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 vegan. She can't, I wouldn't say she's pushing, but she would kind of like, you know, kind of play with me about it. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah, that burger. Oh, how much better it would be if it wasn't a burger, if it was like an impossible burger or whatever. Like it was cool, whatever. It was just playful bantering, right? Well, she had to have a surgery and she lost a ton of blood. And the doctor told her straight out, he said, you cannot be on this vegan diet with this surgery. It's not going to work. Like, you're going to fucking die. Plain and simple. Your body will not be able to replace, replace those red blood cells fast enough. Even with transfusions and shit, like, when this all said and done, you're going to have to get off this diet because we can't keep transfusing you forever. You're going to have to get off this diet so your body fucking brings those iron levels back up and brings your red blood cell count back up on its own. So here's a girl that, you know, I don't want to say push, but promoted the vegan diet for four years, right? Had, you know, her good and bad things with it, but it was more, it was not a health thing. It was about loving animals. It was about loving living things and not harming those animals. So she was willing to let her own health go down if it meant taking care of those animals, right? And lo and behold, the doctor told her, you have to cut the shit. And she did. And when she did, she had to put this post up basically defending herself because the vegans attacked her. They're coming after her like, you, you, you claim you're a vegan, you're not a real vegan, you're a fucking scumbag. Like, they go fucking nuts. And I'm like, no offense, but when was the last time a bodybuilder, right, who has one of the most restrictive diets in the entire fucking planet, 
at periods of time, it's even worse than fucking <laughs> veganism, right? Because veganism, you can have any of the plants that you fucking want, any of the fruits that you want, any of the nuts. There's points in a bodybuilding diet where you're stuck with fucking egg whites in the morning, and you can't even have fucking carbs because you're on low carb, and you're stuck with chicken and broccoli, or fucking turkey and broccoli, or fucking, you know, like, you're, you're stuck with these foods, or like protein powder and fucking a cup of vegetables or whatever, if you're doing like a keto, like, there are times when your diet is so fucking restricted, right? And when that is over, have you ever seen another bodybuilder going, you're not a real bodybuilder? What the fuck? Have you ever seen bodybuilders attacking another bodybuilder when they come off that restrictive diet and go back to eating fucking normal foods? No, because there's no emotional attachment to it. There's only a goal. There's a point in time, that a set period that you're trying to attain a fucking goal. And you're about as intense, you're probably just as intense, if not more intense, than a fucking vegan about diet. I mean, you are fucking calculating. If some vegans don't even measure their food. You are calculating fucking every single last macronutrient, every single last fucking micronutrient over and over again, right? And here we are. It's it's over and you're going to stop it for what? And some people, for health reasons, don't make the show. They stop. You know what I mean? And, and bodybuilders will go, wow, you know what I mean? If it, it, just, as long as it's like and you didn't just fucking quit because you're a pussy, like we're fine. You know, if you quit because your health's fucked up, that's good for you. You know, you want you want to make sure your health is okay. Like, you know, bodybuilding is not worth your health. We've heard that come from many people many times in our industry. But vegans, you decide not to go vegan, they lose their fucking mind. They start putting out blogs about you. They start fucking attacking you. They start writing fucking posts on Instagram. You're like, what the fuck? Because I chose, like, I was sick. I'm going by my doctor's fucking recommendations. The vegan diet was not helping my fucking body. It was making it worse. Therefore, I had to do something healthy. If the vegan diet was making me healthy, I wouldn't have to stop. And we've seen that happen time and time again. I had that one guy that we were working with, the runner, kept fucking his Achilles tendon up. His body wouldn't heal. He was vegan. He was fucking like bone thin. He was a fucking runner. This guy would not fucking heal. The doctor just told him flat out. He's like, look, your lifestyle is what's doing it. It's not the running. You know what I mean? Your body should be able to recover from this. Like, you're being trained to, to, to increase and fucking deload. And, like, your coaches are taking care of this. But it doesn't matter how much protein you get in. It doesn't matter how much fucking fat you get in. Like, you have to come off this fucking diet. Your body's not regulating micronutrients efficiently enough. Plain and simple. There's deficiency somewhere. And they, they were doing blood work on him. And the fucking levels would go up and down like this because he was taking a supplement. So one day they'd be up. And then the other day he took the supplement in the morning, took the blood work at night. The levels would be down. His body was chewing through micronutrients like fucking crazy. So he said, fuck it. He went back to eating meat. He ate four burgers in one day, which is kind of going off. You know, that's really going off the deep end. You know, I think he was happy once he got that first burger in. And his body healed. Training didn't change. Macronutrients didn't change. Micronutrients changed, obviously, through the foods. But his body was absorbing micros. That's another thing. On a vegan diet, your body doesn't necessarily absorb vitamins the same way, even when you're supplementing them. And a matter of fact, many... Um, of these vegan supplements are not the same quality. They're not as absorbable as a multivitamin that's not from a vegan source. So while there are vegan supplements, you can go out there because they'll tell you, just take a supplement. Well, if you're a real vegan, you can't just go buy a supplement. You have to go buy a vegan supplement, which is completely fucking different. It comes from a different source. It's plant source as opposed to, and it's never touched a fucking animal or it's never seen an animal. Like it's fucking, it doesn't even know what an animal is. That's what that vitamin is. But those things are not as absorbable in those forms as the ones that come from animal products. So even though you're taking them, your levels still may be fucked up. Now, you may be somebody out there that goes vegan and everything is fine. You get healthier. You feel like a million dollars and you're fucking on point. Keep doing it. But people like Chris Bell and others that are doing these carnivore diets and stuff, these keto diets, inflammation has gone down. Cholesterol has gone down. Micronutrients are fine. They're not fucking depleting anything. They're getting stronger. They're getting leaner. They feel better. Like, why the fuck would you tell somebody like that, that you look them right in the eye and go, your diet doesn't work. It's not right. And the motherfucker is just as healthy, if not healthier, than you are on your vegan diet. Why would you do that? I think vegans need to keep their fucking noses where they fucking belong and out of other people's business. Stop trying to convert people like a fucking religion. This has become something that's not, you know, it's not even a movement anymore. It's a fucking cult. The way that they act, the way that they fucking talk down to people. I literally just walked, looked at a fucking, um, uh, a lady today talking on, she was like a doctor, right? She's talking about how fucking plant-based this, plant-based that. I'm like, what the fuck? I look. Like, she's a doctor, right? And it says doctor of plant-based fucking principles. And I'm like, no agenda there whatsoever, right? Zero agenda. Doctor of plant-based uh, plant based fucking everything that she's talking about. is plant-based, vegan, all this stuff. She's vegan herself. And it's like, that works for her, right? I guarantee fucking to you, this doctor has treated people as a vegan. And it hasn't worked, but you'll never hear about that. You will never hear about the people. I have my friend John Irizarry. 
who went vegan for quite a while, went back to eating meat. I know that Mike Rashid recently has added like chicken or fish back to his diet again. Many people add these nutrients back into their diets, these macronutrients and micronutrients back in their diet because their body is actually lacking something. It's not because they don't want to be vegan. It's not because they gave up. It's not because they're not strong enough. It's not because they're not tough enough. It's because something has happened to them and for their body, for whatever it is, needs to have fish or chicken or meat or whatever the fuck it is. That lady doctor was actually talking about, <laughs> and actually this was said to me by my friend Cherie, said that it's not just red meat, chicken, white meat, chicken can fuck up your cholesterol too. And I'm like, wait a minute. First of all, where the fuck is the basis for that? I would love to see a 30 year study of 5,000 people that says white meat chicken breast fucks up your cholesterol. Now, don't get me wrong. There's probably some a genetic outlier out there who has had, or maybe even a handful, maybe it's even a fucking ethnicity that, you know, we've seen the blood type diet. The blood type diet basically goes by your blood type and certain foods work certain ways with your blood type based on your ethnic backgrounds from like generations back. I've seen that and there might be some merit to it. I don't really know. I tried it. It didn't really work out that well for me. But there might be people out there that can't eat chicken because it causes bloating due to However, the chicken's digested. We have my friend Chris Cavallini that was eating chicken. That was happening to him. So he switched to, I think it was egg whites or right, um, was egg whites or turkey or whatever it was, and he was fine. So I think there are certain foods that don't agree with certain people. But to say chicken because someone was bloated or chicken because someone's cholesterol went up, like, you don't know what that motherfucker's eating besides that chicken. They didn't have him on lockdown. They told him, go eat white meat, white meat chicken as your only protein source and come back and tell us what happened. That motherfucker goes off. He could be eating fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken, chicken breasts, and then he comes back, like, cholesterol is crazy. Holy fuck, white meat chicken did it. Like, there was no basis for it, whereas a long-term study, and they're like, this lady who's trying to push this thing in her vegan agenda, that is a cult-like process that's happening. Brainwashing, right? That is what's happening. What they do is they try to get an emotional response out of you because you don't want to have high cholesterol because it'll kill you. You don't want to have a heart attack because it'll kill you. You don't want to hurt animals because you love animals. They do everything to get an emotional response out of you. Once you have that emotional response out of a person, it's like a fish hook. Once you grab them, all you have to do is fucking reel them in. How do you do that? More propaganda. More bullshit being slung about this, that, and where's the fucking proof? You know what I mean? How can people like, uh, you know, um, Chris Bell and Mark Bell, how can they be so fucking healthy? You know, John Sikoris from Titan Medical eats two eight-ounce fucking filet steaks a day. Two eight-ounces a day. That's a pound of red meat every fucking day. Not only is he pretty lean, but he's totally fucking healthy. His blood work is fine. His cholesterol is fine. His triglycerides, everything is fine. His vitamin levels, as a matter of fact, he owns Titan Medical. So fucking he gets all the blood work and shit he needs all the time for free. He's fine. If he was sick, he wouldn't be doing it. He's doing it because he is fine and it's helping him achieve his goals. So I'm like, at this point, what the fuck do we do, right? You want to be vegan? Give it a shot. Go for it. You know, to get all your blood work and shit done now, go to the gym and do some actual tests in the gym. Like do like, you know, maybe a 10 rep max for bench press, um, run on the treadmill, do like do some things that actually test you, right? Track those things. Then go on a vegan diet for 12 weeks. Go back and get your blood work done again. Go back and test yourself in the fucking gym again. Don't change the macronutrient numbers. Don't change the calorie numbers. Just change the foods. Go back in the gym, test all the stuff again, get the blood work, see where you're at. If you're, at, if you're in a good place still, continue doing it. Do it for another 12 weeks, right? After that 12 weeks, if you feel good, get more blood work done, right? You should be getting blood work done like that anyways, right? Get more blood work done, test yourself in the gym. If it's working, keep doing it. But if you start a vegan diet and everything goes to shit within the first month, don't force it because some fucking cult member is telling you that this is the way to go because it's the only way or you'll die. That is a scare tactic. That's an emotional response and it's brainwashing to get you to fit that fucking agenda. Matter of fact, only 5% of America, 5% of America is vegan. Uh, excuse me, is vegetarian. And half of them, which is 2.5% of America, is vegan. Now, I got to think for myself that many people out there try to eat healthier. Right? They eat healthier. They try to eat better. Many people exercise now. Like they got Planet Fitness for nine bucks a month. Many people that didn't take care of themselves years ago are starting to do better, right? Those vegan numbers are not fucking going up unless that propaganda starts pushing shit that scares people into it. Many people are just eating a better diet that's lower in fat, animal fats, but lower in fat, higher in complex carbohydrates, vitamin, uh, vegetables, and, and fruits, like a combination, right, of things in moderation. And all of a sudden they're getting better and they're living healthier and they're living longer. The vegan thing, matter of fact, vegans do not live longer. There was a study that I read not that long ago that showed that vegans don't live longer. If you're healthier and everything about your body is more efficient and better, why the fuck aren't you living like 150? Like, it doesn't work that way. So there's this split decision. My thing is like, look, guys, this is not new. 
this vegan shit, or now it's plant-based. Give me a fucking break. They came up with another new name. You know why? Because vegan has too many negative stereotypes to it, right? It's got a negative connotation to it because they've been so fucking forceful. They're like Jehovah Witnesses. Pretty soon, vegans are going to be knocking on your fucking door, slipping shit under there, trying to fucking get you to convert to veganism, and people are sick of it. Now people say you're vegan, they go, Jesus Christ. Like It's a bad taste in their mouth immediately when you say you're vegan. But you say plant-based, they go, well, what is that? Plant-based means fucking vegan. That's what it is. But it's a wider variety of like, I eat plant-based, but I still have turkey. I eat plant-based, but I still have chicken. Like, it's a way to kind of go the full vegan route if you want to, not go the full vegan route if you don't want to, keep everybody happy by telling them you're fucking plant-based, but not really disclosing what the fuck you really do, so nobody comes after you, makes you feel like shit. Like, we're all in a fucked up world. Why don't you just do what is right for you, fuck what everybody else thinks, fuck what everybody else is doing, and not worry about what the fuck's going outside out your fucking door. You know why? Because if that motherfucker drops dead, that's not on you. If you fucking drop dead because of something they told you, that is on you. Because you listened to that asshole and kept doing it even though your body was telling you not to. Pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to your own body. Take care of yourself and fuck everything else that's going on out there. Vegan, carnivore, or otherwise. BossyTrang at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But don't fight. BossyTrang.com is a blog. It's a don't do this bullshit bicep. Just do your thing. And we are out.